In our previous video, we opened up a file, read it, parsed it, and created a vehicle out of it, and then ran that vehicle. In this video, I'm going to do a bit of refactoring. Honestly, it's really bad practice to put a whole lot of logic in this main method like we have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to move this out into a new method. Main method should never be long like this because main should only be what we have to initialize a program. It shouldn't be a whole lot of heavy logic. So I'm going to right click refactor and I'm going to say introduce and then we're going to say method. And method name we're going to say read and run vehicle. Okay. And it, it was barely even visible, but take a look. Do you see we have this main method now? And do you see how now it's calling a method called read and run vehicle? The truth is that those two methods, read and run, really should be separate methods of their own uh, because reading is one thing and then running is another. So why don't we do that? Why don't we, uh, why don't we refactor this again? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to maybe take the first part of the method here and we're going to call that read vehicle. I'm just going to highlight like so. Right click, introduce again. Uh, sorry, refactor, introduce, and we'll say method. Uh, okay, uh, it doesn't like that. Okay, maybe we'll do this one by hand then. First of all, it's a little tricky because we have this really big try catch block. The only thing that we really need to try catch around is that reading the vehicle part. So I'm going to take the catch out, I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to put it right about here. There we go. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to take this vehicle inventory vehicle. I'm going to move that up right before the try block. Just a little bit of housekeeping here to make things a little bit cleaner. There we go. Highlight, uh, shift, and then tab to bring that tab back to where it should be. Also, everything off the, after the catch block, uh, I'm going to shift and tab bring that back one tab stop so it's more nicely aligned. We no longer need this final system out print line here, so I'm going to remove that. Okay, now I'm going to highlight the catch block here and everything up to the inventory vehicle. And let's try one more time. Right click refactor and introduce and method, fingers crossed. And we're going to call this create vehicle. Or we could call it vehicle factory. A lot of times this is what's called a factory method when you are creating some type of object. So create vehicle. Okay. Now take a look. All of that logic was moved into a new method called create vehicle. But really interesting. Look at this. It was smart enough to know what the return type should be. Return type should be vehicle. And now take a look up above. Do you see vehicle inventory vehicle equals create vehicle? It was smart enough to put that in as well. I can go ahead and refactor this part as well. I can right click, refactor, introduce, method, and here we're going to say run vehicle. And OK. This looks a lot better. Main method calling read and run vehicle method. Read and run vehicle is calling create vehicle method, which is reading from the file and returning a created vehicle. Then we call run vehicle, which is running the vehicle that was created. Now, one thing that's very important to do here is to put some javadoc. Javadoc goes right above a method, so it typically takes this syntax. The slash on the question mark key on an American keyboard, and then asterisk, asterisk, and then each line has an asterisk, and then it terminates with an asterisk and a slash. So we're going to say create a vehicle using a factory method by reading data from a file. Okay, return the created vehicle. Throws number format exception if we are unable to read the data properly. In your programs, this Java doc that appears above a method is more important than the inline comments that are in the method. Every method you have should have Java doc that describes what the method is doing. Okay, run vehicle. We'll say Javadoc again, notice that when I do slash asterisk asterisk, it automatically fills out the rest of the template for me. So we're going to say uh, take a vehicle and run it a given distance. Print output. 
uh, before and after. Okay, inventory vehicle, a pre-populated vehicle that is ready to run. Okay, the read and run vehicle method, let's go ahead and do some Javadoc here. So we're gonna say, um, read a vehicle from a file, or let's say read vehicle data, populate a vehicle object with that data. Now you see that kind of red line right there, uh, the, the uh, vertical red line, that's telling us you should really hit enter here if you're doing comments. It's telling us, why don't you keep your comments, uh, truncate the line once you get to that point, or, or make a new line once you get to that point. Populate a vehicle object with the data, and then pass the populated vehicle to a run method, like so. Okay, and I'm going to save. Now let's debug. So I'll snap a breakpoint on the main method. I'll go ahead and snap a breakpoint in each of the... Uh, other methods I've created as well. And we're going to take a look at how this works. So uh, I think everything looks good. Control M. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Wrong IDE. <laughs> okay. Uh, right click and debug. And we'll see that kind of Pepto Bismol color line turn green. Now, very important here because we're dealing with methods, F7 means step in and run this method. F8 means just execute the method and go to the next line. This is a case when we want to do F7 because we want to step into read and run vehicle. Okay, once again, I want I see which line is green now. I want to step into create vehicle. Create vehicle, we've seen a lot of this before. We're going to access the file. You can see the file information down here in the variables tab. Uh, we're going to uh, use our scanner to read the first line. Okay, we read the line. We split based on the delimiter, and when we split based on the delimiter, we can go down here and we can see each, each of its constituent parts. Okay, we split that out into the string that's the odometer, the string that's miles per gallon, and the string that's gallons of gas. Once again, one really nice thing about the debugger is the ability to see these variables as they get read in. If you haven't used the debugger yet in your own program, I strongly recommend you do it now. Another benefit of the debugger is if we want, we can change the values. What if we make it 35,000 miles? Why don't we do a what if scenario here and see what this program would look like if it were 35,000 miles? And you know what? What the heck? Maybe 10 gallons of gas. There we go. Okay, so F8, we're going to parse these strings into, the, into numbers. Okay. And then finally, we are going to pass those numbers into our object called inventory vehicle and we're going to return the populated vehicle okay what happens to that populated vehicle well it gets saved into this variable called inventory vehicle on line 31. now we take inventory vehicle and we pass it into the run vehicle method on line 33. if i chose f8 right now it would execute this line and finish the program but i don't want to do that i want to see what happens inside this method so I'm going to choose F7 to step into run vehicle. Now we see it's going to print some output. So I choose F8. Okay. We'll go to our output here so we can see it happen. And now I'm going to hit the go method. Now just for fun, why don't I hit F7 here? Remember what F7 does. F7 allows us to step into a method and watch it work. So F7, look at the tab on the top very carefully. You notice how inventory reader is currently highlighted. When I choose F7, watch what happens. Okay, now it's no longer inventory reader that's highlighted, it's vehicle. And look at this. The logic that we wrote last week to compute gallons consumed, subtract gallons consumed from gallons of gas, and then increase the odometer. Reusing logic by separating our program into multiple classes instead of one class. F8, and finally, I'll go back to our output again, and we'll get to see this very last line run, F8, okay, and take a look. We still got output that we expected, and even better, it did use the values that we changed in the debugger. So if you want to play around, 
the debugger is a great place to go in there and do some what-if scenarios by trying a few different values and seeing what kind of output you can get. Other things that we've seen in this video, uh, it it is a much more organized program if it's split up into methods that do one thing. Each method should be very concise. A rule of thumb is that a method should be between two lines and 50 lines long, but no longer than 50. Uh, as a matter of fact, they should be very concise. A dozen lines is about right. So if you find yourself just continuing to write more and more stuff in one method, ask yourself, are you doing too much stuff in one method? Now, don't just break the method up arbitrarily. Make sure that the method name is very descriptive. Read and run vehicle, run vehicle, create vehicle. Also make sure that all of your methods have Javadoc and make sure that that Javadoc follows this syntax where we have the slash asterisk 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 slash. We define any parameters that are getting passed in as parameter values. We define any return types that are getting returned. Okay. Make sure it has all of that information, and also make sure that the Javadoc stays up to date. Don't change the method and not the Javadoc and have the Javadoc telling a lie. So Javadoc is the most important type of comment we're going to have, even more important than the inline comments. And when I'm grading your programs, I'm going to make sure that every method has Javadoc. So if you give yourself a 10 on, out of 10 on that, on comments, Make sure every method has Javadoc. If no methods have Javadoc, give yourself a 5 out of 10. If some do, you know, give yourself about a 7 out of 10. But honestly, that's the easiest points to earn, and it's the easiest ones to lose as well. So just get in the habit of writing good Javadoc. I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.